until now we've learned a lot about linear momentum impulse now we want to look at the types of collision all right it's very important that we consider that because we stated a law known as the law of conservation of momentum which states that during the interaction of objects or simply during collision of objects total momentum of the system is conserved but have you asked yourself a question about the kinetic energy? is the kinetic energy also conserved? well it may not the types of collision here will give us more information about that. The first we have here is explosive collision, or simply explosion. Right? This collision is also known as one to many. Imagine one object colliding and then scattering. It happens in the case of fireworks. Alright, fireworks. So you might just wonder where it gets its energy from. Remember, it has a stored potential energy. If you fire a firework, if you project it, it reaches a maximum height and then it scatters. The knowledge of projectile helps us to calculate the maximum height at which it explodes. So, such type of collision is known as explosion. It is a one to many type of collision. In such a case, the kinetic energy of the object after collision will increase. It therefore means that the initial kinetic energy in explosion type of collision is less than the final kinetic energy. So in summary, we can say that an explosion type of collision is one in which the final kinetic energy increases. It's greater than the initial kinetic energy. Now let us quickly move on to another type. This is the first type. That is explosion. We want to consider inelastic collision. Inelastic collision is also a many to one type of collision. Many to what one. It happens in the case where you have two or more objects interacting. But when they collide, they now stick. So it forms a single system, a unit. But you have more than one of these objects initially that collided. But after collision, they stick together to form a single unit. In such case, the kinetic energy after collision, that is the final kinetic energy, will decrease. It therefore means that in elastic collision, also known as many to one type of collision, is that in which the final kinetic energy is less than the initial kinetic energy. Now, the other way around, it means that initial kinetic energy is greater than the final, even if the total momentum of the system is conserved. Let's move on to perfectly inelastic collision, still a many to one type of collision, all right? It's still similar to this. The difference is that in the case of inelastic collision, the final kinetic energy is not zero. It will decrease, no argument, but it will not become zero. In the case of perfectly inelastic collision, the final kinetic energy decreases down to zero. Therefore, after collision, the object becomes motionless, you know? So this is the condition, you want to take note of that. Both inelastic and perfectly inelastic collision, they are many to one. The difference is, inelastic collision final kinetic energy is not zero but preferably in elastic collision the final kinetic energy is zero and hence the object becomes motionless after collision number four is elastic collision this is a many to many type of collision might have two or more objects colliding and then they move away from each other is that okay so such type of collision is known as elastic collision in the process after collision, the initial and final kinetic energy are equal. So that's the condition for elastic collision. In the next video, we are now set to pick questions to solve based on all we've learned and the linear momentum.
Now we've got this question on the board. It's about two bodies. Their masses are 4 kilogram and 2 kilogram moving towards each other with velocities of 3 meter per second and 2 meter per second respectively. If the collision is perfectly inelastic, find the velocity of the bodies after collision. The total kinetic energy of the system before and after collision and hence what is the loss in kinetic energy? Let us see how we solve this problem. We are sure that it is a simple one. Now let me quickly draw the system. All right. In objective case, it might not be necessary to do so. But just look at initially, initially, I have this system. Let's say that. Let me call this one one, and then body two. Body two. Is that okay? All right. Now the mass of this bodies were given to us. We know that they are moving towards each other. So this is something like this. The first mass, we're going to take it 4 kilogram, and then this 2 kilogram. Their velocities we're given respectively as, I said, uh, let this be m1 equal to, then m2 equal to. Their velocities, initial velocities of cars, are given initial to be 3 meter per second, and then u2 to be 2 meters per second. Good. These are the conditions initially before collision. Is that okay? Now, let's see what happens after. After. In after collision, we're told that this collision is perfectly inelastic. So I'm going to indicate that. After collision. All right. Perfect inelastic inelastic collision means that M1 and M2 stuck. Stuck. Are you following? And when they stuck after colliding, this is stuck after colliding after colliding. The implication V1 will now be equal to V2. I can simply call it V subscript C. That is their common velocity. Please take note of what perfectly inelastic collision type of collision is. It's one in which you have many colliding, many objects colliding, then they stick and form a single unit moving with the same final velocity. So, applying our formula, okay, we're going to recall, we're going to recall from law of conservation. Of linear momentum. Right, we've established the formula before. So I'm going to write the formula this time around as in subscript 1 and 2. So we sum the initial momentum. So I have m1u1 plus m2. Is it meant to be plus or minus? It's meant to be minus because they are moving in opposite direction. Is that okay? Um, m2u2 equal to m1 plus m2. They have common velocity. So we are simply going to factorize it out. We can substitute now and see what this would give to us. M1 is 4. So we're going to multiply it by uh, U1, which is 3, minus M2 is 2, and then U2 is 2. And say that, make them equal to mass 1 is 4 kilograms plus mass 2 is 2 kilograms. Then we multiply by the common velocity we are looking for, we don't know. If you work out this side of the equation, this is 12, this is 4. So this is going to give us 8 equal to... Um, 6 times the common velocity. So what does that mean? The common velocity will now be equal to 8 over 6. 8 over 6 will give us what? That's 1.3. 
Then to 1.33 in the stuff like that. Let's find out. 8 over 6 is 1.33. So the common velocity is 1.33 meter per second. So this is the solution to the first part of the question. Right, let me indicate that it is the first part. Okay, I'm going to put I here. Now we'll go for short break. When we're back from the short break, we'll calculate the total kinetic energy of the system before and after collision. You are welcome from the short break. Now let's look at the second part of the question where we are to calculate the total kinetic energy of the system before and after collision. Then we'll proceed to find the loss in kinetic energy, if any. Alright, now before, let's uh, indicate, I'm going to write before, what are the parameters we know. But before then, remember we are calculating kinetic energy. So in that case, the initial kinetic energy is going to be one half m1u1 squared plus one half m2u2 squared. This is going to be the formula. Remember kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv squared or mu squared, depending on the symbol you use for velocity. So initially, this is going to be the total kinetic energy. That is the initial kinetic energy before collision, right? Do you take note of something here that the mathematical sign I use here is plus for kinetic energy, no longer minus. When we're solving for the first part before the break, applying the formula for the law of conservation of linear momentum, the initial part m1u1 was minus m2u2. And I explained the reason for that minus is because momentum is a vector quantity, so direction matters. Energy is not a vector quantity, it's a scalar. Therefore, we're not interested in the change in direction. Is that okay? We're not interested in the opposite direction effect of minus. So, this is going to be plus. Is that okay? Now let us substitute and see. The initial kinetic energy will now be 1 over 2 is common to these terms. M1 is 4 kilograms is given. And then times U1 is 3. We're going to square it. 3 meter per second. Just giving them plus. Come over to this. M2 is 2. U2 is 2. We square it. Summing this, let's see what we're going to get. 3 squared will give us 9. 9 times 4 is 36. Coming over here, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So we're going to have 36 plus 8. And 36 plus 8 is going to give us uh, 44. So that 44 is what we have in the bracket here, divided by 2. You notice that the initial kinetic energy is 22 joules. This is the initial kinetic watt energy before collision. Now let's proceed. After collision, after collision, what is going to happen? Remember that after collision we had their common velocities from the first part of the question. So I'm going to write that. Recall Vc is equal to, we calculated it to be 1.33 meter per second. That is the Velocity after these masses have collided. This is a perfectly inelastic collision. So after they collided, they stuck and moved with common velocity. This value we got to be 1.33. Now the masses are still the same. So we're going to have m1 is equal to 4 kg, m2 is equal to 2 kg. Alright, there is no change in mass. Remember the condition for momentum to be conserved. The mass of the system before and after must remain the same. Good. So, we're going to write that the final kinetic energy, using this EK final, is equal to, of course, the formula is going to be 1 half m1 vc squared plus 1 half m2 vc squared. Because they have common velocity. Let me write that out. 1 over 2 m1, then vc squared, plus 1 over 2 m2 vc squared. So you notice that 1 over 2 vc squared is common. So this is going to give us 1 over 2 vc squared, which is common. We'll factorize it out. Then we'll be left with m1 plus m2. So the final kinetic energy here will give us 1 over 2 times 
our, fi our common velocity Vc is 1.33. So 1.33, we're going to square it, and then multiply by the sum of the mass is 4 plus 2. Working this out, what would it give to us? Let's find out. All right? So this is going to give us 1.33 is square it. Well, let's work it once and for all, okay? And get our result. This is 6. So it's going to be 6, 1.33 squared. Multiply it by 6 and then divide by 2. So this gave me 5.31 joules. So you can say that the final kinetic energy that is after collision is 5.31 joules. Now we've obtained the total kinetic energy of the system before and after collision. Once again, let's go for a short break. When we're back, we'll find the loss in kinetic energy. Of course, if you look at these, there was a decrease in kinetic energy. Of course, it's expected, right, for preferably in elastic uh, collision. You're welcome from the short break as we roll on to the last part of this question, we are to determine the laws in kinetic energy. You recall, when we calculated the total kinetic energy of the system before collision, we got 22 joules. So I'm going to write, recall, EK initial, that is initial total kinetic energy, is equal to 22 joules. We also obtain that the final total kinetic energy Think 5.31 joule. Okay? So there is actually a loss in kinetic energy. The initial is greater than the final, which simply shows that when the, the masses here collide, when they collide, you know, the kinetic energy after collision reduced. Let's get the loss. Loss in kinetic energy will be equal to initial kinetic energy minus final kinetic energy. Some persons may choose to do final minus initial. Perhaps as the standard of what we used to know, usually we do the final thing minus the initial thing. Even if you do final minus initial here, you will get the same value in terms of its magnitude, but just difference in sign. Now, look at something here. If you do 5.31 minus 22, you get minus the value we are about to obtain now. The minus shows that there is a decrease. Is that okay? There is a loss in kinetic energy. So it's still the same as doing the bigger value minus the smaller one. Knowing that yes, there was actually a loss. So this is going to be equal to 22 minus 5.31. So loss in kinetic energy loss in kinetic energy of the system will now become let's find out that's 22 minus 5.31 so it's giving me 16.69 joules so this was the loss in the kinetic energy of this system after collision